Okay, so we found a campsite here at Agrary Springs. And it's a place where I come up here and do some writing. It's David Boji, and here in Agrary Springs, New Mexico, I'm going to talk to you about the relationship of quantum and storytelling. Quantum storytelling. So let's take a look at these wonderful mountains here. Okay. Okay, here you go. Panorama. So I'm out here with my puppies. This is Sparkles. Hey, Sparkles. We're going to talk about quantum physics today. And does quantum physics play a role in storytelling process? So there's Cuddle Bear. These are both sheep, cattle herding dogs. And uh, but they're amazing. They try to herd me sometimes. So we'll, we'll talk about this in the backdrop of the mountains here. So the question I want to raise to all storytellers is, are there storytelling processes, right, that use quantum mechanics to work? This is an amazing question. Turn, turn it around a little bit so you can see it. And uh, yeah. so here I am. Go ahead and talk to you a little bit. So I want to understand that question. Are there storytelling processes that require quantum mechanics to work? Well, we know that quantum mechanics is related to how people see in the, in the retina. Now in birds, there's an entanglement of two particles. And these two particles uh, are in different relationships and the birds use it to navigate. Now I think people use that sort of thing to see. And we use quantum to smell things. We can't smell things without the quantum. Uh, I'll put down a video for you in the description. You can look at it for yourself. So it's so a little bit of history. Niels Bohr in 1932 gave a seminar in Copenhagen on the relationship of light and life, right? And if there is some sort of fundamental way that life is organized that has something to do with the quantum. Then Max Delbruck in 1937 looked at the study of genetics and could it say something important to quantum physics? 1944, Erwin Schrodinger wrote an important book on what is life and said that life is ordered but not random and it's not static. So this became the basis for notions of quantum biological processes. But here I'm looking at the notion of storytelling and storytelling in its complexity. There's multiple storytelling going on in multiple rooms in any organization or community or government, a nonprofit agency, school, right? And if these processes of life are fundamentally quantum for any sentient being and quantum for the materiality of the world, if at the atomic, subatomic level, the nano level, quantum mechanic plays a role in sentient and non-sentient life. And what that's interesting because our body is partly living cells and partly the stuff we feed the cells with and cells dying and cells coming alive, our genetics, the enzymes, all of these things are affected by quantum biology. I survived stage four cancer and had tens of billions of cancer cells, right? Affecting my prostate and lymph nodes and all kinds of things. And guess what? I fought it and I won. I'm so happy. But I didn't wipe out all the cancer cells. I just did the radiation treatment and the, and the hormone treatments, um, better part of a year. 
And lo and behold, my testosterone dropped. This provided less food for the testosterone. Testosterone is going to come back. And I get to live a long life. And I'm age 76 right now. By the way, on my next birthday, I'll be 77. And we're going to celebrate at the Quantum Storytelling Conference here in Las Cruces, New Mexico. And that's where we explore all things about quantum and storytelling. Well, obviously, storytelling relates to the quantum, as Karen Barad puts it in space-time mattering, agential realism, right? And the kind of material discursive, all right? We live in the materiality, but that materiality has histories of discourse, social, political, military, capitalism, etc. So the, the, we can trace this out. We can do what Donna Haraway calls uh, this speculative feminism, this speculative fabulism. Fabula means a story, of course. And we can do uh, what Jane Bennett calls uh, vibrant mattering. And we're very interested in, in the work as well of Myra J. Hurd, right? And the notion of querying these, these relationships between the quantum, and we should really call it quantuming, quantum slash ing, because the quantum is a process. And that's why I like storytelling instead of narrative or story storytelling slash ing because it's a process so you have two entangled processes of the quantum aspects and the storytelling aspects right and this fabulation storytelling i'm a storytelling fabulator right i'm fabulating right now right and we're in this this living earth with multiple critters here Show you. So let's look at, this time we'll look at Cuddle Bear. Cuddle Bear, thank you for protecting me. And Sparkles, everything is going good. We're going to go home soon. They only like to go camping for a couple of hours. So anyway, this is David Boji here in Agrary Springs, New Mexico. We'll visit this place, this fantastic place. When you come here to the Quantum Storytelling Conference December, go to davidboji.com and you will find out some amazing things about what's going on in New Mexico and the awesomeness that's here at the Quantum Storytelling Conference. So if you're interested in quantum physics, quantum biology, uh, material discourses, material semiotics, vibrant mattering, then this is the place that you want to be in December. Thank you. Go to davidboji.com to find out more. Smart. Get some shade. Right? So that's about it for today. What is the relationship between quantum physics and storytelling? 